Paul was the one who declared that we are the righteousness of God. Paul was the one who declared that there's no charge against God's elect. Paul was the one who declared that follow me as I follow Christ. Literally saying he's like the reflector of Jesus. But the point came, Paul now said, I am the chiefest among the sinners. Is it that he backslided? No. He looked first at what Jesus did and accepted what Jesus did. He now turned back to face what the Holy Ghost is doing. So at one point, he defined himself based on what Jesus has done. At another point, he's defining himself based on how the Holy Ghost accepted. Because if you face what Jesus has done and you don't face what the Holy Ghost is doing, you will be shocked when you get to eternity. Because the crown of life is not a gift given to those who are saved. The crown of righteousness is a gift given to those who have fought the fight of faith. Who have finished their course. If you don't fight the fight of faith, if you don't finish your course, there will be no reward for you in heaven. Because reward in heaven is not a product of the finished works of Christ. Reward in heaven is a product of your cooperated work with the Holy Spirit. And so after Paul taught and mentored the church to know what Jesus did for them, he began to also draw their attention to see what the Holy Ghost is doing with them. And so if you are fornicating and all you are doing is confessing that you are the righteousness of God and you are not paying attention to what the Holy Ghost is doing on your inside to stop that fornication, you have been deceived. No matter what you are taught on righteousness, it's an error. Because when you get to heaven, you will discover you won't qualify for the master's crown. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 19, the Bible said the standard of God standeth sure. Now this is Paul now teaching as an elder. <laughs> the first time he taught as a scholar, now he's teaching as an elder. You know, when he wrote 2 Timothy, he was an, they called him Paul the aged. <laughs> This time is an aged man talking. That when Paul was writing Philemon, 2 Timothy, and his latter scriptures, he introduced himself strangely. When he wrote that letter, he said, Paul, the aged, I'm an old man. Now I've walked in grace. I've not just received grace, I've walked in it. So I can tell you some things. And it was at that time that he was writing to Timothy that he told him, the standard of God standeth sure. He said, they that name the name of the Lord, they must depart from iniquity. He said, in a great house, there are many vessels. <laughs> so, in Christ, something happened to all of us, but we are separated. We are separated as we journey in our work with God. He says, some unto honor, some unto dishonor. So, a righteous man can be unto dishonor. These ones were not taught any. You see why two people come, they say they are prophets. A generation will honor one and despise the other. Both of them are prophets, but some vessels are unto what? Honor. Others are unto dishonor. Both of them are righteous, but not all are living righteous. If you say you are a prophet and you are a fornicator, one day the devil will make you have this calculation and it will come up on the internet. Now, when they start attacking you, don't expect the body of Christ to come and sympathize with you. We will pray for you for God to help you come out and be restored. But if you are thinking, we will now come and say, we no go agree, we no go agree. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> you have just made yourself what a vessel unto dishonor and Paul now went further in verse 21 see what he said he said if a man therefore purge himself from these things he shall be a vessel unto honor so the, what gives you this kind of honor with God is to purge yourself he didn't say if the Holy Ghost purge him because this one now is not sanctification. This is consecration. Sanctification is what God does to you. Consecration is your response. Now that you have seen what God has done, to insist that you are like God says. He says, if a man purges himself, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. So it's not everybody that qualifies for good works. It is the one who purges himself. And for you to purge yourself, you must have to begin to see yourself in another order. You have introduced yourself as a preacher and apostle. Now it's time to introduce yourself as a prisoner of Christ. 
you have introduced yourself as the righteousness of God now is the time for you to introduce yourself as the chiefest of all sinners and now that you know there are shortcomings in your life you need to turn to a sacrifice and allow God to chisel you and so in Romans chapter 12 after Paul taught all of the beautiful doctrines from chapter 1 to chapter 8 he now came to chapter 12 and then that's when he went to final you know when you hear finally in scripture they are about to say heavy things from Romans 1 to 8 he was showing us the dynamics of the finished works of Christ and the workings of the Holy Spirit and that is for the whole world Gentiles inclusive from Romans 9 to verse to Romans 11 he was talking particularly to the Jews now that he has spoken to us the Gentiles that we too qualify because of Christ and he has also spoken to the Jews that they shouldn't think they qualify just because of Abraham that they too qualify because of Christ he now group all of us together he now say finally my brethren whether you are Gentile or Jews he said I beseech you that you present your body as a living sacrifice so you cannot know consecration until you start seeing yourself as a living sacrifice now it's not a dead sacrifice a living sacrifice is butchered while he's awake it's like the principle of circumcision you'll be awake and you will cut stones sharp stones and you will circumcise the first king present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable the same you that was accepted in Christ there's another kind of acceptance this acceptance now is only permissible when you have become a living sacrifice so there is one holiness that is based on the perfect works of Christ but there's another holiness that is subject to your presenting yourself as a living sacrifice in Psalm 118 verse 27 the Bible said something that fascinated me see this thing is a body it is those who want to make up their mind to follow God that we accept it check Psalm 118 verse 27 it says God is the Lord which has showed us light we have seen the light and we've seen what Jesus has done but he said now that we have seen it he said bind the sacrifice with cords because a time will come when you want to run away but you have created a cord around yourself so even if you don't enjoy it you can't stop he said bind that sacrifice with cords and then put it at the horn of the altar so that sacrifice can no longer go away from the altar the circumference of his life becomes the rules and the regulations that the Holy Ghost gives to him and so a man who wants to become everything God said and did through Christ must learn the way of the sacrifice he must be bound with cords until he can no longer think talk or act in a certain way those cords that binds you is what we call consecration and so consecration is not a palatable thing consecration is a government that a man puts upon himself in order to meet the standard of God that was defined concerning him it's not enough to quote what God said about you it's enough to live up to what God said about you and so the reason God gave you the Holy Ghost and grace is because it's an enablement actually to make you become what God said and so in consecration we decree that God is not a liar when God said we were righteous our lifestyle prove it if our lifestyles don't prove what God said then we are not qualified to be declared righteous and for that to happen we must buy those cords those cords are the laws that the Holy Ghost gives you those cords are the revelations that come out of scripture as you start searching like an archaeologist and as those laws begins to come they bind you they restrain they constrain they subject you until your path becomes narrow it was consecration Jesus was speaking about when he said narrow is the way that leads to life that road is not bogus it's not massive it's not a deceptive road it's not a large road that is built with manipulation it's a narrow path and for you to walk that path you must be circumspect you must walk redeeming the time with the consciousness that the days are evil that's why Paul said I will not preach the gospel and myself will be a castaway he says so what will I do I will restrain my tendencies it's consecration the doctrine of consecration is no longer taught in the body of Christ so people say what they want to say they do what they want to do and they credit all of them to the finished works of Christ why then did God send the Holy Ghost what did the Holy Ghost come to do 
in John 16 13 he said I have many things to show you you can't receive it because if consecration doesn't come you cannot handle the powers of the ages to come there are many things that are not gifted they are entrusted and so when we start talking through kingdom we will migrate from what Jesus has done and we will go to what the Holy Ghost is doing that's why when Paul talked he said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost it is the fellowship of the Holy Ghost that qualifies you to handle the kingdom and so you find babes in the body of Christ shouting what Jesus has done and unconscious of what the Holy Ghost is doing how dare you call yourself the righteousness of God because of the finished works of Christ while you are yet neglecting the Holy Ghost that is putting laws over your soul every day you don't even know what you are talking about that's why their lives becomes a contradiction consecration is law is government but this law and government is no longer external it's now internal the children of Israel did not have the nature of God and they were trying to keep the standard of God and so it was a body but now that the nature of God has been put in you the Holy Ghost comes to help you live it out and so the government of consecration does not flow from outside in it flows from inside out and so what the Holy Ghost does is to enter deep into you and to excavate that life of God and to amplify it so it begins to dominate you and so a believer must first of all accept the dictates of the Holy Spirit in order to embrace the desires of consecration and it's until consecration is born that kingdom can emerge to you kingdom is not for everybody it's for those who understand consecration 